Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lives, we also can live. Why not open your mouth and say, Father, I thank you. Because you live, I can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fears is gone. No matter the circumstance I'm facing through, because you live, oh God, why not tell him, Father, because you live, I know I and my family will see the end of this year. Because you live, oh God, I shall see the new year. Because you live, oh God, the devil has no power over my life. Because Lord, you're crushing at Calvary. Why not say, Father, because you live, the devil is already in trouble. Because you live, I have victory over Satan and his demon. Why not say, God, I thank you. I thank you. I glorify you. I magnify you. I exalt you. I thank you. Because Jesus lives. The only begotten Son of God. He lives. He lives forever more. I thank you my God. I thank you my Father. Because Jesus Christ lives. Every form of accident. Every form of untimely death. That the devil has sent against me. That the devil has sent against my family. We not stand. Because Jesus lives. Jesus Jesus is with me. Jesus is going with me. Any place I go, I go with Jesus. Because I'm a carrier of the light of Jesus. Jesus said he's the light of the world. And since I am Jesus, I have that light in me. And I go with that light of Jesus. And I also have the Holy Ghost in me. And the Holy Ghost has fire. And that fire of the Holy Ghost, I carry it around. And so every untimely death, every accident by the enemy, against me, my children, against my family, against my brother and my sister, they will not prosper because Jesus Jesus lives. He lives in me. He lives in my life. He lives in my family. He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, wonderful God. Because you live. Because you live. Indeed, we can face tomorrow. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name, Father. Glory be to your name, King of Glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, mighty Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. No room for Jesus Christ. No room for Jesus Christ. It was such a pity. It was such a frustrating situation. When Mary, who was carrying the pregnancy of Jesus, the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, if you read from verse 1, Mary and Joseph, they left where they were living because they were to go to their hometown in Bethlehem where they are going to register because the king or the emperor at that time has commanded everybody go to your own time and make registration. And so they got to their own time. Imagine the Bible says at that time they were going for that journey. It was a it was the due time for Mary to give birth to our Lord Jesus Christ. It was time for Mary to bring forth a, a first son. Our Savior Jesus Christ. It is quite unfortunate that even at this time, yes, we know there are a lot of people over there. We know there are people around the place trooping from various cities to their local villages to be registered. It was quite unfortunate that when Mary and Joseph got there, Mary in pregnancy.
pregnancy. The baby pushing out to come out. And they went to places. The inn is just like a restroom. Where you can rest for the night. Just as our guest houses today. They went there. They knocked at the door. Just to find that this woman that was with pain. This woman that was struggling. They told them. There was no room for them. There was no room to deliver the Lord Jesus. There was no room for Mary to bring the Savior of the world. In a decent place. There was no room for Mary to bring forth Jesus Christ. In a palace. There was no room for Mary to bring forth Jesus Christ. In a very good, in a hospital setting, in a serene environment, where the place is so clear, there was no room for them. Automatically, since there was no room for Mary and, and Joseph, automatically, there was no room for Jesus. There was no room for Jesus. And so what would they do? The Bible said, they went to, place, to the place where they keep animals, perhaps where they keep goats, or where they keep cows. And you, if you have been to an animal farm before, you know how stinky it is. How dirty it is because they pull there, they, they weed there, every one of things, they do it there. Talk less of a place. I know, you know, I, when in those days when I visit the village, in, 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 in our own village, my, my grand, my grand, uh, my grand, my grandfather's uh, sister, my grandfather's sister, um, we normally live with her because um, at that time um, we stay with her. I don't know the reason why we don't stay, we don't sleep in my grandfather's home sometimes because or maybe because they are just a little home and uh, we are so many, so we sleep because you know the family thing they live together. So I remembered we normally sleep in my uh, grandfather's uh, sister's uh, house in a two room. And the first room is just like the sitting room, the eating room, you eat and do that. And then the next room is like the kitchen. It's like the kitchen and um, I mean, um, they keep things there. I can't even remember now whether there was a bed in that room. But all I can remember is that there was one night I was sleeping in the night. And I was sleeping and I opened my eyes. And I saw an eye looking at me, shining eyes, looking at me. So I was wondering, I was, I was afraid. I was very young by that time. The eye was looking at me. I was now wondering, ah, what is this eye looking at me? Not knowing that even in that room, they store goats. The goats that belong to my, my uh, granddad's sister. That is where they sleep. And the door is not locked. So the goats are there, eyes looking, showing, you know, goats will always be showing things, showing things. And when it was, it was, when, when it was um, in the morning that the light was bright a little, and also there were goats in there. And lo and behold, when they open the door for the goat, if you go into that room, it is stinky because the goat, they wheel there, they pull there, and this woman will come in the morning and do what? And sweep the things away. And the following night again, I will let the goats to enter inside. You understand what I'm trying to say? If you have seen that type of situation before, you understand that this place, these animals were kept, is not free range. I want you to understand. The manger is not free range. It's not a place, a big field where the animals are moving about. It's an enclosed place. That was the place that was available for Jesus to be delivered. And the Bible says where I read, Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. No room for Jesus. Jesus was not given the opportunity of a king, even though he was the king of kings. Jesus was not given the opportunity to, to, to I mean, uh, uh, red carpet, red carpet uh, uh, opportunity. Even though the Bible says he's, he's the ruler of the whole world, is the ruler, is the savior of the world. They, was, they, they didn't wake him with red carpet. Instead, they said, no, 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 woman, they didn't even pity Mary. Woman, just get in there. What are we talking about? They did not give Jesus a room to be born. 
instead Jesus was born among animals, among goats or cows or maybe horses or sheep or whatsoever that was kept in there. It was rejected. It was just, it, it, it was just, I mean, that, that, that situation was just um, bringing to remembrance, to fulfillment, rather, of uh, prophet Isaiah. Look at Isaiah 53. It's just bringing back prophecy. In Isaiah 53, even though it is also connected to, um, to, to his death, but it's also, it's, it, the, the, that verse of Isaiah 53 is also connected to the birth of Jesus Christ. Look at verse, verse uh, 3. Isaiah 53, verse 3 says, He is despised and rejected of men. He is despised and rejected of men. And the book of um, John, John chapter 1, where I read last week, look at what it said. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in verse 11, it said, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to his own people, they rejected him. Don't forget, Mary and Joseph went to their own town. Are you listening to me? They went to their own town, but they were not given opportunity. Even though this woman was in agony, was in pain, nobody bothered. Nobody wanted to give them room. Nobody was interested to look at her face that this woman wants to deliver. Let's give it. He said they. Everybody, everybody, I believe, everybody at that time knew because they were shepherd. In those days, most of them were shepherd. So I believe all of them, they knew that that place we are sending this woman to is stinking. But he was there. He was rejected. His own did not receive him. And when he grew up and was proclaiming the, 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 the gospel, was proclaiming the good news, his own also rejected him. They rejected Jesus. They rejected him. And because they rejected him, Jesus Christ looked at it when he died on the cross of Calvary. The Bible said, he looked at those who were persecuting him, those who crucified him, crucified him. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Just forgive them, they don't know what they are doing at all. If they know what they are doing, they will know that who the, the person they are crucifying is the King of Kings, is the Lord of Lords, is the Jehovah himself they are crucifying. If they know who, if they had knew that the person that was coming to be born in that inn, they will overcame their rooms and say, come in. But let's not blame those people yet. In our own situation today, have we given Jesus room in our homes? Is Jesus the head of your family? Is Jesus the head of your home? Have you given Jesus room in your home? Have you given Jesus room in your life? Have you given him room in your life? Who is occupying your life? Or are you saying, Jesus, there is no room for you? Even today that we have tried through the gospel that we are preaching every day, that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Telling people, repent from your sin. What are we telling people? Or what am I telling you now? Is to live evil. Live that which is evil. Because that which is evil is done in the dark, as you had last week. The light has come. Why not live evil? Why not live sin? Those things you are doing, you know they are wrong. Why not live them? When you leave them, that is the first step. The second step is to not invite Jesus into your life. Give Jesus room. When Jesus comes into your life, your life will not remain the same again. When Jesus comes into your life, he will grant you the power. The Bible says in the same book of John, chapter 1, 
Verse 12. He said, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So when you receive him, he gives you the power to become the sons of God. And that power to become a child of God is the power to overcome sin. That power to, the, the, uh, to, uh, that power given to you to be son of God is the power to subdue sin. It's the grace of God in your life to overcome that sin that you have decided to drop. To overcome that evil that you have decided to draw. You need that grace. You need that power. And that power comes in when you give Jesus room in your life. No room for Jesus Christ. Will you give him room today? Will you give Jesus a chance today in your life? Will you give Jesus a chance today in your family? Will you give Jesus a room in your business? If you give Jesus a room in your business, the business will flow in the way of God. I cannot explain that way for you. But you just give Jesus room in your business. The situation will change. Light will come into that business. That business will move beyond the speed of light. Because only God that will do it. It's not by your strength or your power. Give him room in your life. Don't forget what the Bible said. Don't forget what the Bible said in the book of Matthew. Matthew 12 verse 43. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then great he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. What is Jesus Christ saying? A life and a generation that has no room for Jesus is a life, is a generation that has exposed themselves to the attack of demons, to the attack of satanic manipulation, to the attack of demonic and satanic rule of the nation, of the generation, of their life. The only person that can make the difference is Jesus. When you give Jesus that room in your life. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Jesus Christ said, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is still standing at the door of this generation and is knocking. When he was in the womb, before he was delivered, he was rejected. There was no room for him. Today you knew better. Today, you have had the gospel of Jesus. Today, you have been told that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Yet, you are still having no room for him in your life. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in for him and sup with him and he with me. He's knocking today. Give him room in your life. Give him room in your family. Give him room in your business. Give him room in this generation. A generation that have forsaken Jesus Christ is a generation that have been exposed to the attack of the devil, as I said before. Give Jesus a room. Let there be room for Jesus today. In everything you do, let there be room in your education. Let there be room in your business. Let there be room in your family. Let there be room in your church. Let there be room because in some churches, Jesus has been dethroned. They don't have room for Jesus. All they are doing is humanly. All they are doing there in such churches is carnal. Jesus has no place. Give Jesus a room today. And I'm telling you, your life will not remain the same. Let us pray. Hey. 
Do you want to give Jesus a room today? If you have just heard this message, you have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have heard that Jesus is the Savior, many say they believe in Him. They say they believe. But what the Bible is saying here in John chapter 1 verse 12, even to as many that believe in His name, it's not just believing. That believing is there. You are trusting Him as your Lord and your Savior. The believing use there is trusting Him. Don't just say, I believe in Him. I asked a lot of people yesterday when we went out for evangelism. People that I come across, do you believe in Jesus Christ? They say, yes. Yeah, 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 I believe in Jesus Christ. You believe in Jesus Christ? They say, yes. Now, are you willing to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? They said, no. I said, how, how can you say you believe? They say, yeah, I believe. I said, no. The belief is that you must trust Him as your Lord and your Savior. If you don't trust Him as your Lord and your Savior, automatically you don't believe in Him. We are not talking of ordinary belief. We are talking of entrusting your total life unto Jesus. So when you hear from this message, when you hear from this, from this, uh, from this um, um, uh, pulpit, when you hear me saying believe, no, I'm talking about entrusting the totality of your life and accepting Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. That's what it means to believe. If you want to give Jesus room in your life right now, you're going to pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I'm a wicked, terrible sinner. Today I confess that all my sins, please forgive me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. There is room in my heart for you. Please come in. And dwell with me. Please come in and let darkness disappear. Please come in and let your light shine in my life. And change every situation in my life. Thank you Jesus for answering me. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus name. If you have just prayed that prayer, I congratulate you. And I pray that the Lord will help you to take it seriously. And to attend church. Where the Bible is preached. Father, thank you for as many who have made this confession. Thank you for many who also seated in the church. Who have no room for you. But today, oh Lord, they are making a decision that they want room. They are going to give you room in their life. They are going to give you room in their business, in their studies, in their families. Lord, help every one of us to fulfill this desire. To fulfill this commitment we are making today that will give you room in everything we do. Come into our lives, O oh God, and take perfect control. From today, O oh God, you have room in our life. In our generation, Lord, we pray you will, you, you, you will have room. You will touch our generation that they will make room for you. And Lord Jesus, when they do, you will change and transform the generation. That's our desire, that's our prayer. And we believe you will do it. There is room for you, Lord, in this church. In churches where there is no room, as the pastor or the minister or the bishop or the elder is hearing you today, Lord, I pray you grant them the grace to create room for you in their various churches, in their various fellowships, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for your word, because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.